Will I ever be able to make all these patterns? Probably not, but we'll see how far I get. <laughs> Today, we are scrolling through my Rohori favorites, my chaotic Rohori list, to see what I want to make in 2023. So let me take you along. But first, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. I am Finn, I make knitting and crochet related videos on this channel, and I talk about mental well-being. I have a Facebook group, a community group, uh, I'm very active on Instagram and there will be a new community group soon. But today, Revelry. We are going to scroll through it because if I tell you that Revelry, scrolling through Revelry, browsing new patterns is one of my favorite pastimes, I'm not kidding. Uh, th there's been a lot. For the short amount of time that I'm on Revelry, there is a lot. So uh, let me take you along. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> so I have my laptop right here. Uh, I thought we'd do this pattern video a little bit different than normal. So I'm going to share my screen. You will see everything that is in my favorites. There are 68 favorites. We're not going through, going to, go, <laughs> we are not going through all of them. I will pick out a few and hopefully we'll be able to make a final list of what I really want to make in 2023. So let's see where we'll get. I'm going to share my screen with you. So, as you can see, we are on my main page. Let me go into favorites. As you can see, I made a few bundles. I have a bundle for cardigans, socks, sweaters, tank tops, and tees. And you can clearly see that the sweaters are uh, dominant in here. So let me just open up my sweater tab. What I found really funny is if you see this, this setup of all these sweaters together, there is some kind of theme. They are very neutral. And as you, if, if you follow me here, you know that my clothing style is not necessarily neutral. Like what I'm wearing here, this top, it's new by the way, I'm so obsessed with it. Uh, it's, it's quite neutral for me. I like to wear a lot of blues and greens, but I am looking for a bit more classic pieces. And for me, that means some uh, colors that will take me a long, a long way, so many years. But mostly the reason why I picked a lot of those sweaters is because for the style, for the fit, um, knowing that I can change up the color, of course. One that really grabs my attention immediately is this sweater by Anna Wenzel. It is the Badger and Bloom, and I just love the high contrast of this sweater. Just absolutely love it. I think it is beautiful. If you don't know, Anne Wenzel has many beautiful uh, colorwork sweaters. Uh, the Spot sweater is also one that is still on my list. But yeah, this one, I think it is so cool. I love the sleeves, that they're a bit rounded on the bottom. Uh, what I don't love is how uh, low the the sleeves are separated from the body. That is something I find a bit weird. Uh, for example, I don't also don't love this colorway, but Badger and Bloom is definitely on my list for 2023. Um, I know that it is possible to make with Drops Air as a substitute yarn, but I've been working with Drops Air. I, I just finished the sweater. I'm making one right now, so I'm not going to make it right now. I want to do something different. The, the yarn that you, uh, she mentions for the pattern is also possible, of course, but it is out of my budget. Not at the moment, a bit too expensive for me. So Drops Air is an amazing substitute yarn, but not something I want to make right now. Something I really, really want to make this year is a more neutral sweater with big stripes. So, um, for example, it could be the Marseille sweater by Petit Knit. However, I'm not obsessed with the fit of it. Um, so I chose two other sweaters with stripes. And one of them is the Nord Pullover by Hanne Rimmen. Or Rimmen? Hanne Rimmen, I think it might be German or Scandinavian. But this sweater, I think it is really pretty. I'm not 100% sure if I want to make it yet, but I love the stripe detail that is a little bit different than normal. And I love the loose fit of it. I think it could be very classic, but just with a little twist. What I also find really fun is the detailing on the sleeve and the neckline. I think she chose black as color for this, oh, sorry, <laughs> as uh, the color for this sweater with the contrast. But yeah, I find it really, really interesting. Uh, the ribbing, I think it is a twisted rib, looks very pretty. Something I definitely do enjoy to look at. Uh, I'm not sure if the fit will be my preferred fit. I think it is really beautiful. Something else that I think would also be really good is to have some more, I don't want to say basic, but staple sweaters. And one of them 
would be the port sweater. This is quite a new sweater by Ozera. And at first when I saw it, I wasn't, I wasn't amazed by it. But when I started looking at the details more, I thought, okay, this could be really, really pretty and just a classic, classic sweater. So when you look at it, there is a beautiful high neckline, very uh, large ribbing band and another uh, very beautiful, can I see it? Yeah, is the shoulder detail. So it is a drop shoulder, but it has this beautiful kind of ripped detail. I'm not 100% sure what it is. But it looks pretty. And as I said, for the discount for all of these patterns, I have no idea which one I will end up making. Maybe it could be cool to, at the end of this year, look back at this video and then look, okay, what did I actually make? Maybe we could do that. But yeah, this is also a good contender. Another sweater that was recently brought to my attention in my latest live stream, I thought it was Alice who said it, so thank you, is the Withmore sweater by Amy Loden. And this, I think, is so beautiful. I think it's so romantic, quite feminine, but still uh, flowy and a bit oversized, which I, I love all those things together. You can see here, it is kind of quite a lace design top. There's this beautiful detail over uh, all over the yoke. Uh, I think it is a round, round uh, neck, round yoke, how do you say that? And there are two options for the sleeves. It is, uh, by the way, also a size inclusive pattern, which I'm really happy to see. So the two options that you have are a tapered sleeve or a bishop sleeve. And the bishop sleeve is my preferred style for this sweater. So I think that is also what she did here. So the very large flowy sleeve at the bottom, which cinches in a little bit. I really like this uh, sweater pattern and I, I really hope I'll be able to make it this year. Then a sweater that I'm actually working on is the Arctic Light sweater by Takuto Wakika. If you follow my podcast, you know that I've been working on it uh, just a little bit. I paused it for a little bit, worked on some other things, and I want to pick it up again. I really want to show this one again because I am making it. Uh, this is in my list for 2023, and I think it is so beautiful, um, gorgeous. I love the design. Kuto Wakika really is a very, very good designer. I, I'm amazed by how fast she made designs and how she comes up with her ideas. Really, really follow her if you're interested in uh, designing, but also just really fun videos. But yeah, this sweater, I think this is beautiful. It will be my first cable sweater. I already started on the cables. I think I'm about at the second uh, finished cable, if you see it from what I'm pointing at in the screen. So I really want to finish this this year. Will be will be possible, I hope. But uh, yeah, this is absolutely in my list for 2023. Okay, let me just scroll over a few of these patterns. Uh, the newspaper pullover by Hoya Locutelli is also one that I found very pretty, very fun, very different. So I hope to be able to make that this year. The Kyuri sweater, um, I'm not sure who made that one, by Ronya uh, Hakaleto. Leto? Ronya Hakaleto, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Which is actually a free pattern, like, how? I think it is a beautiful colorwork sweater. I really want to make something really beautiful colorwork eventually this year, so I hope I'll be able to make this one. And then is there a last one that I want to point out? Oh yeah, yeah, this is the last one that I really want to point out. This is the Augustine's number one by Anne-Sophie Feiling. I think this is gorgeous and so different from a lot of other sweaters. It's almost like a blouse, but then knitted, of course. So at first when I saw this, I wasn't 100% sure what I thought of it, but um, as you can see, I really like a large sleeve. I have another top that has that ruffle detailing that I really enjoy on my figure. I also have a top that has the uh, peplum kind of um, stinge on the waist that also this top has. So it almost has all these little aspects that I really enjoy in clothing. I think this will be difficult to knit, I think. It looks difficult, but yeah, I think this will be a top that I will enjoy a lot and a little bit more special occasion wise. So beautiful for Christmas or other, maybe no, my birthday is in the summer, so that won't be nice, but just, I don't know. It's just a special knitted top. So this one is definitely on my list for 2023. Now we've seen some sweaters, let's go into tops. We are back on my favorites page and let's go into tees. There are not as many as the sweaters, as I already said, but I've been looking into some tees because 
I want to also be knitting in the summer, in the spring. So yeah, I found some that I find interesting. Some only because of the yarn choice, because I have some yarn laying around that I want to use from Stash. And some other really because of the design and the look of it. So let me pick out this one first, the Sailor Tee. This one tab seen a little bit again in the stripe detail that I really enjoy. And I also really enjoy the sleeves of this one. This is uh, oh, also by Hannah Riemann. Did I already mention her? I think I did. But this is the Sailor's Tee by Hannah Riemann. It reminds me a little bit of the festival sweater, but then different. Uh, I don't know if it's the same kind of way if you, how you work it. But it is a short sleeve tee, but a little bit longer short sleeve, which I enjoy for myself. I'm not uh, a big fan of showing my arms, so a little bit more coverage I enjoy. And I really like the detail of these stripes. Also, the, the, the pictures are a little bit difficult to see how the sweater, what the sweater looks like. But yeah, it is. I think it is really pretty. Uh, as I said, love the sleeves, love the, the way it is worked. I have no idea in what kind of yarn she made it. Something hold together. But um, it's, it's something that I found really beautiful. So hopefully I'll be able to make it this year. Then another top that taps into that the, the, those design details of the Augustine sweater is the Desert Bloom top. This one is by Rachel uh, Curihara. Um, and this has kind of the peplum design. It has the cross design, which I also... This is like a t-shirt version of a top that I already have, of like a, a blouse thing that I already have. I think it is really beautiful, a little bit more styled. I find it sometimes really hard in the summer, on the warmer weather, like what to wear and still look a little bit like fun, you know, like how I would want to look. And this is a top that I think would really help me like dress up a little bit, but still feel comfortable and not too warm in the warmer weather. So I'm really looking, looking ahead already for what uh, will work, especially since here in the Netherlands it doesn't get super hot or it can get quite hot. Uh, but not compared to some other countries. But if it gets warm here, oh gosh, it gets warm. It's like sticky warm and it's not good. So uh, being able to make something like this, maybe in a cotton fabric, I think it is made in cotton. Let me look quickly what it is made in. Oh, this is raw merino and linen, but it probably will be, will be doable in something like a cotton. I think something like this will be very, very nice in my wardrobe. Then another top that looks a little bit like the same a fit as the first tee that I showed you is this one. This is the Gaia by Marisette C. And it is this really classic knit and pearl uh, detailing uh, short sleeve top. It is a very classic fit. I can already imagine how versus how this would look. Maybe with a skirt, maybe with some jeans, maybe with some shorts when it's really warm. Uh, different kinds of colors. Yeah, this is something... Oh, you can see it here with a skirt too. I don't know, I, I really like this fit. I really uh, am looking forward to diversifying my closet, uh, my wardrobe a little bit. And I'm really looking for classic pieces uh, that will look good right now, but also in 10 years. And I think this is something that will never really go out of style. And even if it does, I, I as, as long as I like it, I'm fine. I don't really go with trends a lot, just sometimes if I really enjoy them. But this is something that I find really beautiful. And as I said, I love the detailing on the yoke. And also I think this could be made in, I think this is a cotton, yeah, 100% cotton. So lightweight fabric, good for the warmer weather. Then last but not least, I wanna show one very different one. And this is the Out of My Dream Street tea by Johan Ha Lee. And this is a tea made of mohair, so questionable if it is great for warmer weather <laughs> maybe if you can make it with something else but on this color by the way is this electric purple mm, love it so gorgeous and you can also see it in different kinds of colors uh, i know uh, this is Brybelly who also 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 uh, isabel from Brybelly uh, who also made this in this gorgeous mohair hand dyed mohair blend mix i don't know it's, it's just really beautiful I really like the tea thing. Oh, this is a very different kind of fabric, as you can see, so that is also possible. I, I don't know, I, I really like it. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, I love her color choice. I think it is really, really beautiful and something I would enjoy to wear, maybe. I, I'm not 100% sure if it's great for Dutch weather here, but it is something that I find really beautiful. We got sweaters, we got tees. Let's go into tank tops because as I already said, I'm looking ahead for warmer weather or layering pieces, statement pieces. 
and I've been looking into tank tops and there wasn't much in here to be honest when I started looking yesterday but I have been uh, browsing a little bit and I found some that I think are fitting for what I'm looking for so let me go into this one first this pattern isn't on Ravelry maybe let me just look it up okay so I looked up the pattern as I said it isn't on Ravelry so I looked at someone who made it as you can see here but this is the pie camisole by Crea Diaz Studio and it has been in the works for quite a bit as I know my friend oh here she is Adela made it and I know she adores it and she loves to wear it and I think this is also one of those classic pieces that is very great for layering it is worked on a very tiny needle which i don't have so if i want to make it i maybe need to get some more needles or i have to figure out gauge and everything and then and, and see it from there but yeah this has been on my list ever since i saw it gorgeous really really beautiful i don't know how bra friendly it is yeah maybe maybe we can, i can figure that out by then then a top that i actually found yesterday is the soho top by kadri and I really like the neckline of this. So uh, last year or the year before maybe, I found out that I have some tops that I really like to wear um, with the high neckline, a little bit lower in the back. This isn't low in the back, I think, but this neckline is something that flatters me that I enjoy wearing. And I also uh, enjoy, or enjoy, I don't mind my arms in it. <laughs> so I think this will be a good addition to something like that in my wardrobe. I'm not sure if I want to like I enjoy making it because it is worked flat for a little bit as you can see it is a garter stitch pattern so it is worked flat for a little bit but it will also be worked in the round which means you're only purling so I'm not 100% sure how I would like that but I think it is a good staple and it could be really gorgeous and nice for the summer for layering I'm not 100% set on this but I do like the look of it and the idea okay another top that I've been looking into that I also really like the color that is made in and something that I would enjoy to make in that color is the camisole number four. This is by My Favorite Things Knitwear and this camisole is made in silk by Knitting for Olive which I also plan on making it in. This is really high on my list to make. However, I have been looking at pictures from others and sometimes I really enjoy how it looks on other people. Like I really adore the fit and sometimes I'm not 100% sure and then I'm like, will it look good on me? I don't know, will I enjoy wearing it? As I said, I really find it important that what I'm making, uh, I will enjoy wearing. Okay, it can happen of course that sometimes you make something and you don't love it as you thought you would, probably will happen to me too. But I do try to be really, uh, make a conscious effort to look at the things, uh, see if I already have something similar from design items, as I just said before, to figure out if I want to wear it or not. So one thing that I'm not 100% sure about is how lo low cut it is. So it is quite low cut and I don't know her, what her chest measurements are, but for me, I know if it's that low cut, it will be very, yeah, very booby. It will be booby and I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't feel comfortable in it for myself. It could look beautiful on other people, but I'm, I'm not 100% comfortable in that one. So that is something I'm th still thinking about for this top. Another very different top that I think would cover enough is the Strawberry Feet Stop by Camille K. So this is a cable top and I like that the straps are quite wide. It is not super wide, but I think it will be bra friendly enough. I don't know how long it is because she has it tucked in into a skirt, which I do love the look of, or it is a skirt, I'm not sure. Uh, skirt, skirt, shorts, something in that, something like that. But yeah, this is uh, really gorgeous. As I said, I love that it is not too low cut. Oh, here you can see the length. Yeah, this is great. For me, I would like to make it in a different kind of color because as I'm very pale, those colors don't always look the most flattering on me. You can already see some different kinds of yarn that she chose. So a lot, uh, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk is also one of the yarns recommended, but there are more. What I always love to do is just browse into Reverie in the other projects that people made and then look in what kind of yarn they used. So this is, I, I think that is one of the best things to do if you want to use a different yarn than the recommended yarn. That is something that I almost always do. But yeah, it's just really fun and you don't need a lot of yarn for it, which is cool. There's some lace stitch, oh, lace stitch as you said here, knitting it around. More complicated techniques are explained by step-by-step -step videos, which is also good. 
that is great. Let's see, is there one more top that we want to highlight? I think it might be this one for me. So this is the Trunk Island Tank by Beth McDonald Stone. And this is a really, really fun, I think, good staple piece for uh, warmer weathers, for layering. Like I'm not 100% sure how to would layer with the, with the bows, but I've seen people make it in the project pages without the bows. So that's also possible. I do like the addition of the bow. So yeah, this is one, another one that I would enjoy. I would like to have a bit more fitted, but that's just how I like uh, that to fit on me. And the boxy fits don't look very, very flattering on me. So that is something I keep in mind. Something else I want to say about this. It is made with two strands of light ring ring silk yarn, held double. Uh, you could also use a sport or light DK single strand. Sorry, my voice is, <laughs> is like falling out. So I won't make it too long anymore. But yeah, this is something else that I really, really like and is very beautiful. Let's go into some other patterns that I have here. Let's do cardigans because there is one that I really enjoy or looking at. I don't know if I would enjoy making it, but it is the olive cardigan and it is the Whitmore cardigan. But I will show you that one in a little bit. So the olive cardigan, there are two versions. You have the v-neck version, which is this one. It is a button band, uh, more supposed to be with buttons. I like the sleeves of this one. But there the, then there's also the other version without a button band. But I know lots of people put buttons on it. However, let me go into the project and show you one of these with a button band. Oh yeah, here. She grabs love. Uh, she is also one of the people that I saw this one on again. And oh, it looks so beautiful on her. I love the color she could chose. I think it's something with artichoke. But you can see here that it gapes a little bit because I think it is not necessarily intended to have buttons. So that is something I'm not sure about, but I do love the fit of this specific, so the non v neck neck style because of the, like this is folded in. I know she, she does it like that. She has a video, I think a reel on it on her page, but that is something I really find very beautiful. Then compared to the v neck one, has a bottom bed, of course, and it's supposed to be like that. Let me go into some projects. Oh, there are not that many actually. Okay, I'm surprised by that. Let me see here. Uh, good chala. Yeah, so this is a button band, but the fit is very different and I'm not sure if I enjoy that over the other one. I think the other one is a little bit more classic looking. Um, not from this person compared to the other one, it's just the, the, the two patterns compared to each other. I think this one looks a bit more classic with the uh, feminine style of the neckline like this that you can fold in. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure which one of the two I want to eventually make, but this is definitely on my to make list as many others as i said already <laughs> and let me then also go quickly into the with more cardigan or with more with more baby loading yeah so this is the cardigan version of the sweater that i already showed you and i've shown this actually in a video i think already i will link it here it is the knitting patterns for winter video with all sets of colors of patterns and this was also in there, if I'm correct. I think it was in there. And oh, I love the fit on this girl. I think it's beautiful. I love the color. So I like it when it's a bit more fitted, but still has some positive ease, you know, as she has on here. And I like when it is open like this. Uh, you can also wear it close to the top. This is the version of Amy herself. She has it open and doesn't have buttons on the top, which also is a possibility. Yeah, I also really, really like the look of this uh, in cardigan form. And then the question is, am I going to make the cardigan or the sweater? As you can see, I don't have many cardigans in here because for cardigans, of course, you work back and forth most of the times. Uh, you can also stick them. I've never done that, but I don't look forward to working back and forth because I don't enjoy purling whole rows. So I did that for the cumulus blouse. Yeah, for my mother, I did that on that one and then the purling uh, took so long. So. That is why I don't have many cardigans in there, but just a few. Okay, I just opened up my all like all the favorites because there is a dress in here. Like there's only one dress and if oh, I didn't put the vests in here too. Okay, let me quickly do that. So there are two slipovers in here and go to show you one, which is actually a new design uh, from a design that I already mentioned. This is the Keep It Warm Slipover by Yong Wadi Lee. Sorry, I'm so sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. She actually asked me to test this pattern, but um, I already mentioned it before. I get stressed from testing. I don't like knitting on a deadline, so I was like, thank you so much, but sorry, I won't be testing. She was totally fine with that. 
but it was because I already posted this I think in a fangirl Friday on Instagram and I think this is so cool so this version is specific this is a slip over with a open side and I'm not sure if she has the pictures of the open side in here no she doesn't okay there are two versions a closed side version as you can see not here here <laughs> this is a bit more fitted also and then this one has a open side but she doesn't show it why, why doesn't she show it well you can see it a little bit you can have uh, there are different options in the pattern if i'm correct is what she said before to uh, the attachments that is something i do enjoy with like maybe a, just a t-shirt underneath like a black long sleeve or a white long sleeve or something like that or a um, blouse as she has here okay now we go back to all of my patterns because as i said there is a dress in here that i want to show because i think it is beautiful and i show this to my boyfriend and like he is he is super supportive of what i'm doing he thinks it's amazing that i knit but he is just so picky with his taste it's not just not just only with my knitting it is just with everything so <laughs> everything I'm, sh I'm showing him I, yeah, he's like yeah i don't like it but when I showed him this, it must be a man thing. He was like, okay, yeah, you can make that. You can make that. <laughs> it's just uh, all fun and games. But uh, yeah, I love it too. I think it's beautiful. I've seen it on different body figures also. And I love it on all of them. Maybe I can show a little bit. But this is the Oh My Figure dress by Stina Jorgensen. This is a form-fitted dress which um, has these paneling kind of details that uh, enhance your figure. So yeah, I think it is gorgeous. I would want to make it with long sleeves. So let me go into the project because I know people made it with long sleeves. Let me see here. Yeah, so this is more the version that I would like to make. This is also a bit more comparable to my figure, I think. Yeah, so long sleeves. Uh, you can in, uh, adjust the length. You can make it longer. You can make a slit in there. I think it is just gorgeous. Look at those people. They're all looking amazing. Everyone is happy in them. So many beautiful colors also. I'm not sure what kind of yarn is used for the pattern. But um, oh, this is also gorgeous, this color. Yeah, so if I want to make a dress, I'm still a bit... Oh, do I want to make a dress? Because it's a lot of knitting and it is ripped, which makes it even more, yeah, more knitting. Uh, but yeah, if I want to make a dress, something like this I think would be really, really cool to make. Okay, then there's one pattern, a cowl pattern actually, that I would like to adjust into a shawl. So I'm not really a cowl wearer, but I do and like this pattern and I think it could be really easily made into a shawl. So this is a very high contrast for me. Uh, cowl with all these fun little details and blocks of different designs. As I said, it is worked in a tube, I think, and then knit together or sewn together. But I think following just the pattern, uh, making it into a bigger shawl, maybe a little bit longer, just wrapping it around with some fringes on the bottom. Oh, I, I, oh, I love the idea. I really, really would enjoy something like this. And I also love the colors that she used. I think it is very versatile for a lot of different clothing pieces for jackets. So it will be for winter. For example, I have two green, dark green jackets and I have like a faux leather jacket for more, more like the seasonal, how do you say that? The in-between seasons, so spring and winter or fall, spring and fall. It does take a while for really get warm here. I can wear a scarf for quite a long time here in the Netherlands. But yeah, this is something I really enjoy and I got to it on accident. I haven't told you how it's called actually. It's the Enzola Cow and Enzola Cow by Inky Atelier. I think it is really fun. I love the design, the detailing. But yeah, you can just carry this through all over the scarf, of course. And then last but not least, this is the Summer Night Sky by Lisa Hannes. I will show you the pattern page because what I'm showing now is just a project page for someone. I also like to just save project pages of other people because of their yarn choices, their color choices. But this is the scarf uh, shawl itself. So I said the Summer Night Sky by Lisa Hannes. I think it's really cool. It could be a really nice scarf. But uh, normally I'm a big fan of blues also. But when I saw it in this green one, that, that really got me. So this is a project by Benny Rhee I see here. She used this beautiful green color for the contrast. And I think some hand-dyed yarn for the other one. 
that really goes very nicely together and this is another one that i think while it is very busy and very in your face is not the right word but it is not like a plain scarf or shawl i think this could still be a piece that could be quite classic i feel like if i look at it it feels quite classic to me this is actually something that i would also enjoy wearing it is a big project as you can see here it is large to knit so will i knit it this year who knows but i do love the look of it <laughs> so it will be something that i would enjoy we'll do a last little scroll on here you see a bikini even in there uh, another cowl here some sweaters a blouse Th there's quite a lot in here and um, some other choices uh, let me do one more and this is a project that i'm absolutely not sure if i will do this year but something that will be so special to me I made a video about temperature blankets I think the end of December so I will link it in here but this is the linen square temperature blanket by Tony Lipsy uh, I, I adore Tony she is amazing uh, she's even subscribed so if you're watching hi Tony <laughs> so yeah I, I really love this design and I would love to eventually make a temperature blanket for the year 1997 because that is my birth year that is my boyfriend's birth year and I think it would be so special and cool to have this in the house. I, I don't know, I, I think it will be have some sentimental value, especially because our both our birth years are the same. Yeah, I just love everything that Tony creates. I love the colors that other people chose for it too, because I would go for a bit more a neutral one. I actually saw this one by uh, Michelangelo. Okay, that's cool, <laughs> Michelangelo. Um, with all kinds of more pastel -y, a bit more toned down colors how do you say that i love i love it i love these kinds of colors so uh, this would be something i would absolutely enjoy making however this is of course a very big project something that i would need to have the yarn all the yarn buy all the yarn for it once because if you buy yarn just thinking okay i can buy a little bit more later i talked about it in the temperature blanket video but it could be that it is not in stock anymore and that you have a bit of a problem so yeah you can change it up of course but i want to do it good then so this will be something that I eventually want to make. Maybe I'll start it this year, uh, maybe not. Yarn sponsor is here, I am here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just kidding. It's, it's just something I would love to make eventually to, to tap in on the uh, Tony temperature blanket patterns because I think they are great and she has many beautiful ones. Now, I think, um, I think we did a lot. This is really, really something I enjoy doing. So scrolling on Ravelry and looking at all the patterns, all the things that other people made. So yeah, I, I cannot wait to see what 2023 brings and to see what all of the beautiful things are that are going to be making. But most importantly for me, I think it is to remember uh, what is my goal with knitting and crochet, but I mostly knit at the moment. Uh, crochet can hurt my, my body a little bit, but what my goal is, <laughs> I'm probably already sorry. What my goal is, is to just relax, get out of my head, connect with other people that are also knitters and like the patterns are cool but almost like a side thing you know but yeah i would love to to see what i make this year and i think it could be fun to do a end of the year roundup video in uh, like end of this year or maybe beginning of next year to see what i actually made because trust me i think i'll be making a few percent of these like I saw some videos of other people that are planning their year, which I think are great and I love watching them, but I don't want to, um, how do I say that? I'm just not great at getting myself stuck in things or I have to say it differently. Like I watch, love watching those videos of other people that show what they are making or what they are going to be making. I really enjoy those Flying With Me 2023 videos, but for me, I'd like to make some plans, but I also want to have the freedom to still choose different things. They probably do the same, but for me personally, I have to have it a bit more open. So if I see a pattern next month that I'm like totally oh, head over heels a lot in love with, then I will be making that one. And I think that's totally fine. So it, it, I like the excitement that I get from favoriting these pieces and thinking about what I want to make, which yarn I want to use. But I also love the feeling of the freedom that I have with choosing different patterns almost every day, you know? So I even started a new sock yesterday out of nothing. Okay, I had the pattern on favorite, but um, yeah, I, I just like to have that possibility to just diversify what I'm actually going to be making. 
I hope that makes sense. I would love to know if there is a pattern that you like need to make this year. Please let me know below in the comments. And if there are patterns in here that you also have in your wish list, we could even become friends on Reverie. I will link my Reverie below. So uh, you can also see all my favorites there, I think. Yeah, I will link it below because I already don't remember what I, what I mentioned. And you can just scroll through my favorites. Maybe you'll get some more ideas. So that would be fun. And we can become friends on Ravelry. I don't do a lot with it, except to uh, doing a lot of browsing here. I don't know if you can even talk together, but I'm rambling again. <laughs> I love to make this video. I love to hear what you are going to be making this year or planning on. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, like it here, subscribe, because I post weekly on here, do a podcast every other week. And there are a lot of fun things coming this year. And I hope you enjoyed it. So bye creator, I will see you in the next one.